Hi, Christina. We're so happy to have you with us today. We're excited for you to be able to share your story with everyone. So you have a very unique story. You know, it's pretty rare that we would find a patient who ends up having two different cancers at a, the same time point. So we're going to share with the audience today a little bit about, you know, how that journey was and how both of these were found. I think that many patients who get diagnosed with a single cancer, that's a huge you know, changing point in their life, uh, let alone to find out that they have another one only a few short months later. In many cases, I'm sure, as you were probably worried, that, you know, did one cancer spread to the other part of the body, which would be called a metastasis. Luckily, in your case, uh, this was not a metastasis. It was a completely separate cancer. But um, we're excited to, you know, share your story today about how that was found and how all of your doctors were able to collaborate together to give you the best care that we can. I went in for a routine mammogram uh, back in Santa Clarita, where I'm from, and I was sent for additional imaging. And after that, uh, they sent me somewhere where they were gonna do the biopsy, but they couldn't find the tumor, so they sent me to Burbank uh, Disney Cancer Center where they did the biopsy and when they told me that it was cancer i told my husband that this is definitely where i want everything done that's how i got referred to dr grusi and he referred me to you yeah dr grusi is your medical oncologist, oncologist so one of the things about cancer care is that it's what we call multidisciplinary, meaning that there are multiple physicians that are gonna be involved in your care as, I've, as you've learned along the journey yes. here, right? Cancer is not just taken care of by one doctor. So you saw the medical oncologist who referred you to your surgeon. Um, and then we were able to have a great discussion about all of your options. I think one of the things I wanted to point out was that um, Christina did the best thing that she could for herself in her breast cancer, which was to get her screening mammogram. Um, one of the things that we know about breast cancer is that if we can find it on screening, um, we can find it small, you have all of the treatment options out there. And that's really the best way. We want to diagnose it at earlier stages for better prognosis and again, the most treatment options you can have. So tell me a little bit about coming in to meet me and, um, and yeah. hearing about all of your different options. You gave me all so many options um, and it was funny when you suggested um, reduction. So taking a bigger part of the cancer part and then making the other side equal and I started laughing because that's um, something I had been looking into and that also gave me something to look forward to to have something a little perk out of this not good experience so yeah the plastic surgery with the oncology that that's a big I think for women it's a big thing yeah. to have that yeah I mean offered. And we'll, we'll hear about kind of on the other side of things, but from the breast side, you know, I think that there are a lot of parallels, right? We can do a mastectomy, remove the whole breast, right? Um, or we can do a partial mastectomy, which would mean to remove a portion of the breast. But one of the downsides of partial mastectomies can be that we can leave a dent or deformity to the breast, especially if we then have to add radiation to it. And that's where oncoplastics comes into play. We're able to use plastic surgery techniques in order to remove the cancer, reshape the breast, to minimize that deformity, and then also do a contralateral procedure for symmetry. I think it's important, especially with something like breast cancer, because it's not just about your scars, right? It's about how you look and how you feel as a woman afterwards. And I think it's one of the reasons many women kind of ran back towards mastectomy because they, they didn't have great outcomes with the partials. They didn't, you know, even though they still had a breast, many times it didn't look or feel like what they wanted it to. So um, again, in your case, it was great that you had so many options and were able to choose to do that. It made a big difference to have that offered because you think that you don't care when you hear the word cancer. I don't care how I'm gonna look, but in the end, it was important to have something to look forward to that I was gonna feel happy and I am happy with the results. <laughs> so, you know, what we know is that when we do um, 
when you do a partial mastectomy or lumpectomy, um, we do have to pair that with radiation as part of your treatment, right? So um, when you were finished with everything, you went to see the radiation oncologist, and um, I know that you really wanted to do partial breast radiation yeah. over whole breast radiation, so they wanted to send you for a scan to see if they felt like they could target the right area, right? And you had marked it really well. I remember <laughs> texting you on, on the app, I'm like they, they, they don't know if they're gonna do the whole, um, because they said that they could probably not find exactly where it was, but it had been marked so well that I was able to get um, partial radiation. So that's, that was also easier on me to have that done. Absolutely. Little things that you don't, think that would make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Now, you had a great experience with radiation, but tell us what happened from that CT scan. Yeah, for planning the radiation, they sent me to a CT scan and my PCP called me afterwards and she said, uh, we saw a spot on your kidney. So basically start over again. Not even started with the radiation and already with something else. But though it's been hard, I've had a lot of support, so that's been helpful. Yeah. So you got sent back to Dr. Grusey to talk about what back this was Dr. on Grusey. on your CT scan, right? Yes, uh, and he sent me to Dr. Narayanan. Great. After your CT scan, you know, that's when I, you know, come in and, you know, to, quote your husband's love of baseball I'm just batting cleanup at this point so essentially <laughs> so when you you know when you come to the uh, when you came to me um, the first thing I, I as I saw was uh, your imaging was done you know uh, most tumors are found based uh, we call incidental which means that uh, it's found for some other reason you're getting imaging of the abdomen for something else you come you know people come to the ER with abdominal pain um, and then, or they come to the ER and they sometimes have lung pain and the top of the kidney gets scanned and they find something. So, you know, initially, so your, your scan was done because you were following all of the instructions that, you know, Dr. Fancher had laid out for you. And with that imaging and one of the, you know, awesome things about the, the way that our, you know, cancer centers are structured is in, and, and of course that uh, you were treated at the Disney Cancer Center. Dr. Grusey, Dr. Fancher had already teed up everything. And so they, all they had to do was just say, hey, you know, our urologic oncologist <laughs> is down the hall, go see him yeah. because he's got to take a look at this. Literally and down so, the hall. <laughs> exactly. And so, and then when I got your image, the first step that we do whenever there's a renal mass is you have to characterize it and I have to look at the images. So I wasn't able to see those images directly that you initially had, but that allows me to sort of get the, the, the sort of, you know, uh, uh, proper imaging, which is the uh, typically an abdominal MRI when we're dealing with a mass that may need surgical therapy. So very sort of apropos to what, you know, uh, your treatments for breast cancer, we always, we also have, you know, partial treatments for kidney tumors and then complete or radical treatments for kidney tumors. So when I saw your tumor after the um, MRI, and as you had described, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize it was Valentine's Day that I called you with the result, but I, I knew that, you know, waiting is the hardest part. So I, I wanted to make sure that you got the results so that we knew, you know, we're getting the ball uh, going here. And as soon as I saw where the uh, where the mass was and it was looked like, yeah, as I told you, I, I knew exactly what you were you were heading toward, and that was the robot partial nephrectomy. Yeah. So we had those discussions about you know are we going to take out part of it, are we going to take out the whole thing? And I think what most people you know often don't realize is that taking out just part of the kidney is much more difficult than taking out the whole kidney. Um, and <laughs> you know when we were going through those those talks with you, I think you were um, I really commend you because you were really just okay, let's do this and, you know, go on board. And, you know, your, your questions were all you know, excellent questions. You were talking about, okay, well, how am I going to recover? You know, already you were, you were thinking ahead about, I think, you know, getting past this and already going to the next I was worried that they, it was the same cancer yes. and it's completely separate. It, exactly. And, um, and that's, that's typical of, you know, depending on the type of malignancy you have, but we don't rule it out. That's why we sort of really do, you know, some additional really detailed levels of imaging in your case, um, because again, you're so young, you're you know healthy, we wanna preserve your, your kidney function. And so that's where the, the discussion of how you treat the tumor starts to come up. So the location of your tumor was in a way, uh, in a place where we could just resect part of the tumor and spare the rest of the kidney. 
So that is how we, and it's called a partial nephrectomy. And from a technological standpoint, we, um, you know, we're a center of robotic excellence um, here. Um, and at, at especially, you know, in our, in our integrated system. So you were going to get, I knew it. I knew when I saw the mass, I said, okay, this, this woman is heading for a, you know, robotic partial nephrectomy. But most people don't realize. Knew yeah, yeah. I know he knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so to prep you, we always say, look, we're going to, you know, we're going to go after this thing, but there's this risk. And I know that you had a little bit of difficulty kind of, and that's, that's human nature because, you know, of course, you know, nobody wants to lose a, you know, a whole kidney. Um, but for sometimes for the cancer cure, um, it's the necessary thing. So the cool thing that we did, as I showed you, um, is that we have a, a computer model. So everybody gets an individualized computer model through this program we use called Sivra. And we were able to do that for you. And so the tumor basically looks like a, you know, like a, it's, it's colored in gold and the rest of the kidney and the rest of the, you know, associated structures are able to be seen. So it's really an incredibly powerful tool. And um, with that tool, we were able to plan your surgery and do everything, you know, in a, in a very sort of bespoke, you know, way, but with excellent cancer control. So then that brings us to the, you know, the day of surgery and, um, you know, one of the things I definitely, uh, I have to give so much credit to you and your family. I know that they, they were around you and your your husband, of course. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, and as surgeons, I think one of the things that definitely weighs on me for a huge operation like that is that, okay, she's got, you know, her husband, she's got four kids. And so we really, you know, we really want to make sure that we have, um, you know, we always bring the A game, but you know, for you, it was just that much more special to just make sure that we take the extra time to get that, you know, get the tumor out and spare the rest of the kidney. And you only took 25% of it out, so yes. that's amazing. Yeah, so during the case, and as I was telling you, it was one of the one of the most challenging partials I've done just because given the nature of how the shape was, but you know, that that added time and, um, and, and, and your favorite more than me, Dr. Gottlieb, I have to give him a lot of credit. Without him, you know, yes, we couldn't have done the, like so he's Dr. our, and he's our, <laughs> and he's our urologic oncology fellow. So one of the amazing things, and, and again, we, that, that's at St. John's, of course, and now we're, we're going to have that same um, pathway over at, in Burbank is our fellowship program. So, you know, our fellows are awesome. So he, you know, I, I would just say the, the the equal amount of credit to, to him because with his assistance on the you know with on the robot bedsiding as we call it um, that is so important for for us as the primary surgeon doing the you know we're, we're you know at the end of the day I'm, I'm controlling the the robot almost analogous to a video game as you when as you I now I found that. out you looked it up I didn't tell you that <laughs> when you told me about the video game I was like. Really? You, thank God you already did the surgery because I would have been really worried when, when you so, say, but what, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, it's I mean, amazing the, technology. Absolutely. And, um, and you know, like I said, your, your blood loss overall was, you know, because again, the, you lose more blood during a partial nephrectomy than, you know, than, than the an actual kidney, but overall your recovery was, was excellent um, and your overall outcomes for your kidney function, as, as our last visit showed, yeah. your, your renal function is completely normalized and your hemoglobin, your blood counts are, are yeah, great. Yeah. And the biggest thing was we were able to, you know, spare so much of the kidney and all your margins were negative. So it's really, I, I call that, you know, an absolute home run. Yes, I, I'm so grateful for both of you. Well, for all, all the whole team, Dr. Goosey, Dr. Gottlieb, yeah. and my PCP also. Oh, of course, yeah. She, you remember when I went in to see you? you yeah. You're like, who's this PCP? She's really on it. Absolutely, yeah. Dr. Swanson, she was yeah. really good on that too. And absolutely, my, no. Well, well, absolutely all my doctors, I, I'm very grateful for. Yes. Your story was, uh, it really was just amazing to me because it's just a, a combination of good doctoring, you know, and good, you know, sort of, like I said, um, you know, input from you at the end of the day, you know, we're going to tell you certain things that we believe and same things that we would do for our family members. But, you know, with your, if you don't buy in and, and trust us, then, you know, of, of course, you know, the, um, it, it, yeah, the road is not as, as smooth in your case. And you make it easy to trust you guys, yes. both of you. Thank you. It's, I remember you coming in when I was ready, getting ready for the surgery uh -huh. and being so serious and so professional. And that gave me some sort of like calmness that went over me, you know, when you do all the drawings and everything, you were so like professional and so <laughs> serious and like, I know what I'm doing. <laughs>
how have you been uh, so one of the things you've, you've gone back to work you're all your friends are you know sort yes. of back around you I mean you're, you're here you are you have two separate malignancies and now you're you're cured and that's that's a great feeling a month exactly four weeks ago yeah. I had my surgery for exactly. I've been back at work for a week I wanted to go back last week mm -hmm. but um, yeah I feel great I'm, I'm good I just get tired a little bit more than usual mm -hmm. but what else can I ask for the support is what takes you through it because it's it's hard it's very hard i debated in telling if i should tell everyone around me uh, what i had in the end i decided to tell my friends and my work everyone just because of that support that you feel tell people so they can help you through it you can't do it by yourself your doctors, your family, everyone around you have, they contain you. It makes a difference to have everyone helping you out.